This video is sponsored by one of our Patreons, Caleb Trim. Thank you so much for being a Patreon and supporting the show. Your help lets us make the show better every season. Season 2 of the Totem Pole was full of all-star players and iconic moments. Things like a new twist on the game made players adapt like never before. As the game continued, it was packed with moments that made Totem Pole history. These are the top 10 most memorable moments from Season 2. My name is Wesley Bryant, the creator, executive producer, and host for the show. I'm going to rank these top 10 moments based on fan reaction, impact on the game, and shock value. These moments had us talking way after the season was finished. Number 10. A storm knocks out the power. The game had just begun, and CJ had won top of the totem pole. She completed the placement, and it was time for the switch. As we're getting ready to film that next phase of the game, a massive storm had rolled into the area. Then BAM! Lightning strikes and the power in the filming location goes out. Production had to scramble to find a solution. Filming a season takes a lot of hard work and a lot of people. But one thing we didn't consider was not having access to power. Production had to get charged laptops to save footage, batteries for cameras, and new hard drives to save that footage. In the meantime, the cast had to sit waiting in the living room. They were monitored by production to make sure no one was talking game, but it brought the cast together in a way that otherwise couldn't have happened. We continued the game, and eventually, the power came back on a few hours later. In the end, the storm became the theme of the season. And the promotional material said that a storm was coming, setting the stage for a crazy and unpredictable season. Number nine, Ashlyn's door slam. We have some beef. Rachel won top of the totem pole and there was only one safe spot left. She understood that because there were only powers left in the game, the switch was going to be able to eliminate someone later in the round. She placed her totem pole, keeping her closest allies in the center of the placement, thinking that the switch would want that number two safe spot. She placed Alantis at the very bottom of the totem pole and she just so happened to be the switch. Alantis wanted to save herself and avoid having to be in the vote, so she switched herself out with who was in the number two spot, Ashlyn. This meant that Ashlyn was now the bottom of the totem pole and there were no save cards left in the game. As Ashlyn was eliminated, she walked by Elantis and said, I thought we were friends, I'll remember this on the jury, and walked out the door, but she did not go quietly. She slammed the door so hard that it rattled the house and rattled Elantis' game. I'm just really sad because I thought we were friends. I'm gonna remember that on the jury. Number eight. Rachel wins three challenges. In the game of the totem pole, two players go home every round. If you win the challenge to be the top of the totem pole, you have a lot of power, placing everyone else on the totem pole. But with that comes safety. You get to survive two eliminations in the game. Rachel was consistently a powerhouse player. When she wasn't the top of the totem pole, she kept being placed in the bottom five and had to fight for her life in the game several times. In the first round, she was only safe by one vote. If one player had flipped their vote to her, she would have been one of the first players out of the game. Then, she went on to win three different challenges, solidifying her safety and giving herself lots of power in the game. Rachel just keeps beating me up time after time after time. When she wasn't safe, she was always in danger of going home. She won a strategic balancing game, a physical competition, and an endurance competition, claiming her crown as a powerhouse player. After either being in danger or controlling the round, she went on to win the season by one jury vote. Number seven, Morgan blows up his game. In the first round of the game, the house had to vote two players out because of the save card. Morgan, Kendall, and Rachel were in the most danger. Jorge was talking to Morgan H. about the vote and told him that other people were saying his name. While he had heard his name, he made it seem to Morgan as if more people were talking about him than actually were. Morgan didn't want to lose the game just yet and decided to put his fate into his own hands. 
He immediately got up and stormed to the other room where several other players were strategizing. He walked in saying, so, um, who's been saying my name? <laughs> in reality, they weren't talking about him. He and Evan got into an argument after Evan had just saved him moments before. While they weren't originally targeting him, that move made him look like a confrontational player. In the end, they voted him out, citing when he busted into the room. So it's obviously this other room. I'm about to barge in there and I'm not having it. I'm tired of this. I'm gonna get to the bottom. Hey guys. So who's been saying my name? What? Nobody. Nobody, because I've been approached by two people that said they have heard my name quite a few times. Okay, well, we said your name, but it was to say that you're not being voted on over here, so don't come Okay, I, I wasn't trying to be accused. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Number six. Jorge plays his cart, and Caleb is auto-eliminated. After Rachel won the tree challenge, the placement and the switch sent CJ out of the game. Then, it was time for the defender to select a power. Alantis drew the card that let her pick two players who were up for the vote. One of those two would go home. After taking what felt like three years to decide, <laughs> sorry Alantis, she picked Caleb and Jorge for the vote. Jorge had previously found a secret advantage that made him safe from a vote if he played it. Jorge cut right to the chase, announcing that he had the secret advantage and was going to use it, meaning Caleb was the only player eligible to receive votes. Sadly, Caleb said his goodbyes and left the game. And as they say, all is fair in love and war, honey. All is fair in love and war, honey. <laughs> I was really not sure what to expect coming in, but this has been just a really phenomenal phenomenal experience, so I'm glad that I can share it with all of you That's guys. great. Number five, Jace continues to save himself. Jace, Jace, Jace. There's plenty to say about his gameplay in season two, but one of the most memorable moments was his ability to consistently avoid elimination. He was repeatedly placed in the bottom five, leaving him up for the vote. And in more cases than not, he was always in danger. At one point, the vote was tied and his game was in limbo. Before I revealed the votes, Jace played a secret advantage that blocked Valentino's vote. He was able to live another day, but had to fight again. He used his charm and social gameplay to maneuver his way onto the next round in every case. Before filming, Jace used the Brant Steel Simulator to study each save and power card in the game. He used the process of elimination to predict what twist would be unleashed as the game went on. He worked hard to make it to the final three. Hannah won the final challenge and had to bring two people to the end with her. In the end, she had to pick between her allies, both Rachel and Jace. She ultimately sent Jace home, cutting him just short of the final three. But don't worry, he carried that baggage onto season three as a returning player. Number four, the tree challenge. This season, because of the storm, the playing area was muddy, but that didn't stop the players. They all wanted it. Athena and Hannah clashed hard and physically fought to get to the other side before the other. Then, Caleb slipped and took an unwanted mud bath. But the ultimate battle came down to Jorge and Jace. After Jace slipped in the mud, Jorge wrestled his way on top of Jace and literally dragged him to the other tree. This moment showed every player wanted to win this game, and in the end, Rachel beat out Jorge for the win. Number three, Alantis plays her card. Like Jace, Alantis had to fight all season long. She was having an emotional moment and felt like she had lost all hope in the game. Jace gave her a pep talk, encouraging her to fight hard and do what it takes to stay in the game. Then she got up and found a secret advantage that let her place herself at number two on the totem pole placement if she used her card. She held on to it all season long and found the perfect opportunity to play it. In the final round of the game, with controversy, she played the card to claim the number two spot on Hannah's totem pole, launching herself into the final three. Hannah was originally thinking of bringing her allies, Rachel and Jace, to the end with her, but Alantis' move made Hannah decide between the two. Alantis went on to get second place by just one jury vote, earning her the title of one of the best all-star players in the game. Jason Alantis had similar stories of consistently having to fight to survive, but in the end, her card helped her slide above Jace. Number two, don't say aww. <laughs> one of the most memed and quoted lines from all three seasons of The Totem Pole came from a moment in episode two. 
Kendall had worked hard to keep herself in the game, and as she said in her iconic confessionals, she did not want to be the first one out. She had heard that Evan was pushing her name, so when her name was announced as the first player eliminated, the cast said, aww, but Kendall was not buying it. She said, don't say aww, and turned to Evan saying, watch out for this one, he's a little slithery, and walked out the door in coin fashion. Kendall. Oh. Don't say aww. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's sad. So sad. Yeah, it is sad. Um, hmm. um, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. Watch him. He's a little slithery. Oh. <laughs> and the number one moment, the Evan versus Alantis battle. One of the most talked about moments of the season was the Evan and Alantis battle. Alantis had to pick a player, the two of them would have to battle, and the loser was out of the game. She picked Evan, one of the other powerhouse players in the game. Evan had already made power moves as both the Switch and the Defender in the first round. He was sitting pretty in an alliance and was set up to go far in the game. After being picked, he and Alantis exchanged words before the challenge. Then, the two fought hard trying to stay in the game. In the end, Alantis barely beat him out, cutting one of the most impactful players from the game early in the second round. His time was cut short and Alantis went on to have to survive a vote. This battle single-handedly changed the course of the season, leaving Evan as a player worthy of a second chance. Do you agree with my list? Leave a comment below and tell us your thoughts on these moments. If you want to have your own ideas come to life on screen, become a Patreon. One of the tiers is that you have your own totem pole ideas come to life. You'll have a brainstorming session with me and the game development manager to plan a video for the channel, just like this one. Again, thank you, Caleb, for being an amazing supporter and Patreon of the show. A new episode of Season 3 comes out every Tuesday on Totem Tuesday. Thanks for watching.